welcome to Marta Loop Church. Today we are continuing our series on the uh, art of Rembrandt, a series entitled Seeing Jesus Through the Eyes of Rembrandt. As I said uh, last time, two weeks ago, Rembrandt painted Jesus and scenes from his life many, many times, and today we're going to look at another scene that played out just after Jesus was born. And the topic this morning is going to be on the theme of hope and a promise-keeping God. And so, like last time in this series, uh, our, our morning is going to be shaped by three texts. A song that we're going to hear twice called Just Breathe, written by Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam fame. A story about an old man in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, named Simeon who ends up holding Jesus one day. And then thirdly, a painting depicting that same story, which is the Rembrandt that I referenced already. So again, I say it all the time, but you're going to hear it again. We call these different texts, texts believing that God has something to do with all of them. To different degrees, of course, the Bible Everybody in the Christian faith would say that's a text. And some Christians who love Rembrandt and know that he was a person of deep faith maybe would be okay with saying a Rembrandt is a text through which God might reveal God's self. But Eddie Vedder maybe is a stretch for some people. But if God made the man and God gave him gifts of creativity and lyricism and and, and voice uh, to, to write a song, a beautiful song, which is going to connect, I think, in a beautiful way this morning, then who else do we thank for that song and that artist but God? All good Eddie Vedder music is God's good Eddie Vedder music is the theological reason for that. Or as Calvin wrote, all truth is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, today we're going to explore God's truth through all three of those texts uh, together and kind of interweave them. Um, after I say a prayer, Brett is going to sing the song just without introduction, and we're going to listen, and then I'm going to do a sermon, and then we're going to listen to the song again in the context of the painting and see if those connect in a different way. Okay, let's start. Enough intro with a prayer, and then... Uh, Listen to Eddie Vedder's Just Breathe. God, we thank you for just how much you uh, are a creator and the writer of the cosmos and everything that fills it. And how all things right now hang together in you, Jesus, Paul writes, and and everything was made in, through, and for you. Great painters, uh, wonderful masterpieces, uh, beautiful lyrics and melody, uh, the scriptures, God breathed, um, holy writ, and, and everything in between all of that, uh, written by you, sung by you, sung over by you, authored by you, there for your glory uh, to in some way, uh, even though things are fallen and broken and corrupted there to point to you. So by your Holy Spirit, the same spirit who led Simeon in his life and leads us in our lives, who uh, leads the church, lead us in this church this morning we pray. Give us understanding and wisdom and knowledge and help us to see your face. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yes, I understand that every life must stand. Uh huh. As we sit alone, I know someday we must go, uh-huh. Oh, I'm a lucky man, 
To count on both hands the ones I love Some folks just have one Others they've got none uh -huh. Stay with me Let's just breathe Practiced all my sins, never gonna let me win. Uh huh. Under everything, just another human being. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't wanna hurt. There's so much here in this world to make me bleed. Stay with me You're all I see Did I say that I need you? Did I say that I want you? Oh, if I didn't, I'm a fool, you see No one knows this more than me as I come clean, I wonder every day as I look upon your face. Uh -huh. Everything you gave, nothing you would take. Uh -huh. Nothing you would take. Everything you gave Did I say that I need you? Did I say that I want you? Oh, if I didn't, I'm a fool, you see Cause no one knows this more than me When I come clean Nothing you would take Everything you gave Hold me till I die Meet you on the other side Beautiful. Thanks, buddy. And here's the next text. The story about an old man named Simeon from the Gospel of Luke. It plays out shortly after Jesus was born, days after, when his parents took him to the temple for a religious rite. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout, devout, and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. What a promise. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I've seen your salvation, 
which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations. And he is the glory of your people, Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest hearts of many the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your mary your very soul now that is a very beautiful and very ominous story i mean god honoring the life of this old man Simeon before he died but by making that promise to him in the beginning at all and then keeping that promise and God warning Mary and through Mary everyone about the ominous side of Jesus coming what it means for Simeon it was an it was a good story it was a good day The Holy Spirit led the whole way, whispering the promise to him to begin with, leading him to the temple on that day and not the day before or the day after. And then somehow in the mystical moment, um, letting him know, because surely there were other young couples who were bringing their children for this purification ritual, that it's this couple. And then having that affirmed when he gazed upon that little boy all by the spirit and then led by the spirit knowing what he then knew and holding who he then held to prophesy in the way he did sovereign lord now let your servant die in peace as you have promised i've seen your salvation which you have prepared for all people he's a light to reveal god to the nations which includes you me and he is the glory of your people Israel this is Christmas right God's light is coming has come to us God is coming and is with you and everything will be okay because you're not alone. Third text. This is Rembrandt's masterpiece, Simeon in the Temple. And if you didn't grab one, all these prints I made, so please grab one. Take one home, stick it on your fridge. In that beautiful masterpiece, this beautiful masterpiece, the old man with the beard is clearly Simeon holding the infant Jesus. And there is a woman in the background, which might have been painted afterwards, some critics think, um, not by Rembrandt. Um, But there's a woman there, and some say clearly that's Mary. Others say, no, clearly that's Anna, the prophetess, who's mentioned later in the text I just read. Um, But maybe for this morning, given the controversy, let's pretend it's you looking over the shoulder of this long-promised old man into the face of the infant Christ. What would that have been like? (laughs) As I contemplated this painting this week quite a bit, I tried to imagine what it was like for Simeon to be in that moment and thought, well, surely this deep sense of peace that comes with promise kept 
finally, God, I didn't, and I questioned, and, but now I know that you are a faithful and promise-keeping God. I knew I could trust you. And maybe right alongside that, a trembling kind of gratitude and thankfulness, a joy. You told me that I would see the Messiah face to face, and now I get to hold him? Simeon, an, an old man nearing the end of his life, at, at that point, not when he was young and strong and green and lithe and had vigor, but at, at this aged ending point of his life, probably felt more himself than he'd ever felt throughout his whole life. More alive than he had ever been. This week I learned, to my surprise, that this was the last painting that Rembrandt painted before he died. Now how profound is that? He was in Simeon's shoes when he painted Simeon's story, God's story. He, as a person of deep faith, was waiting to see Jesus face to face as he was painting a picture of an old man at the end seeing Jesus face to face. He was on the edge of that in his own life and was, for 17th century life expectancy standards, fairly old, <laughs> my age, <laughs> 62 and a half. And apparently, he was not able to finish the painting because he died before it was totally completed of, they think, age-related illnesses. And if that's true, then he painted one of his greatest masterpieces in a very, very weak time. At the end of his strength, and maybe his vision, and maybe his dexterity, maybe he had arthritis or his hands were trembling because of a pre-Parkinson's age-related shaking. He created one of his strongest works while he was weak. Even as Simeon held the long-promised Messiah while he was weak. Maybe he had age-related Parkinson's, and maybe he was trembling and had arthritis in his hands. I hope I can hold on to this kid. Christ came to us in our weakness and let us hold him. In our deepest need, when we didn't even know to cry out for him, or could never do enough to make him come. He came. Before Rembrandt painted this version of the Simeon story, he had actually painted and etched several others, uh, masterpieces, some of them in their own right. But this was the masterpiece in terms of his capturing of that story. This is where many believe his artistic gift found its fulfillment and reached its zenith. This week I read a critique of the painting by an art historian named Gary Schwartz. And he noted that this, in this version of Rembrandt's painting, <clears throat> the extras that were in all the other versions were all taken away. No cavernous temple setting, no temple priests, no crowds, just Simeon holding Christ and this woman in behind. Schwartz writes, the few figures are given no context at all. They are thrust at us, spare, unmediated. Rather than defining the personages in dramatic light and dark, which was Rembrandt's raison d'etre when it came to his work, 
Rembrandt, Rembrandt leads them, lends them an even glow, mysterious rather than dramatic. Forms are suggested rather than described. Now Rembrandt, right? Like he, the way he painted the lace around all of those portraits he did of rich people in his day, like the intricacy, like he, that's what he was known for. And all of a sudden he's dropping that and suggesting through forms rather than describing through form. Costume is indicated with the merest marks with no appeal to the sense of touch. So it's a different kind of Rembrandt. It's Rembrandt arguably at his best. Having to paint this scene at that point in his life this way because it needed simplicity to hold the profundity of what it was depicting. It, it needed to be sparse to, to capture the intimacy of like that far away from the face of Christ. Simeon was looking at the Messiah, his Savior, and they were together at last. As I think about it, it's as though the lack of detail makes room for the mystery of Christ. That, that is what a promise kept looks like, certainly, but, but it's also what a promise kept feels like. Now we should all go to, where is this painting? I think it's in Stockholm. We should all go there and stand in front of it for two hours just to get what promise kept feels like. A, a foretaste of what we are going to one day, Lord willing, all of us feel when we see him face to face. This is what love for Christ embodied in this old man who is where he's at that, that's what it looks like that's what it feels like and this this Advent Christmas season is what the love of God through Christ looks like looking at you an infant oh the humility of the love of Christ. So for weeks, probably months, I've been talking about this painting, even in this context, and to everyone else in between. I, I think it's beautiful now, understanding what I read from this art historian because of its spare and unmediated nature. As though the spareness makes space for Christ. Somehow through the mystery of images not clearly depicted, just suggested, and us having to lean in, we meet the God, the Spirit who is leaning in toward us. And I love that. Because the moment you tell me you have Jesus figured out and you can paint a clear painting of him and you know exactly what his teachings meant is the moment I walk out of the conversation politely with you. And me too, right? Because I get up in public and try to talk about <laughs> these things. But we do, we pre-prescribe with clarity that is not merited who Jesus is and over-understand him sometimes and claim to know who he is and how he works in ways that are often antithetic to who he is and how he works with overly precise detail that always, always gets the church into trouble. Church does it all the time. Church that's holding my ordination papers has everything locked down in very clear doctrines and rules and orders, orders of things. and they become idolatrous and they blind us 
to the presence at times, can blind us to the presence of Christ. We know so much about Jesus, we forget he's with us. That's the Christmas message we're celebrating next Sunday night here, 6 p.m. Small commercial break. He came to you to be with you. And he's with you. In his article commenting on the painting, Gary Schwartz writes about something called the style of old age, which at my now Rembrandtish old age, <laughs> I was intrigued by the thought of there being a style. It's not just like go out on an iceberg and, and finish out your days. There's a style that comes with this place in life, in his place in life. And this style, he's quoting another person named Blosch, Block, Block, German, the hard CH, um, on this idea. But it's a style that Block sees happening in a lot of artists. They just get to a point and then they kind of jettison everything they know. And they're this new, more, next way of expression comes to be. Brosch. Brock descri de describes it this way, and I will stop with his last name. Herman describes it this way. The style of old age was not always, is not always a product of the years. So it's not just a chronological thing. It is a gift implanted along with other gifts in the artist. It is the reaching of a new level of expression, such as old Titian's discovery of the all-penetrating light which dissolves the human flesh and the human soul into a higher unity. I have no idea what that sentence means, and I don't know, really know Titian much, but you just kind of you kind of nod as you hear that, and you go, oh yeah, Titian. Yeah, it's like that, isn't it? <laughs> or, like, or such as the finding of Rembrandt and Goya, now we're to Rembrandt, both at the height of their manhood, of the metaphysical surface which underlies the visible, this is spirit talk now, in man and thing, and which nevertheless can be painted. In terms I can understand, you get to a point where you can paint what, what's really there in behind what you're merely able to see with your eyes. And Rembrandt got there, says this critic. And when you see a painter get there, there is a higher unity at play. You know, with, within the painting and the ways we've talked about the intimacy and the beauty and the connection between you and the painting, you and the text, and ultimately between us and God. A unity that captures the invisible, gives words or expression to the ineffable, the essence, the isness of the moment. What mattered most, he caught in this painting. What matters most, he's caught in this painting, now preaching to you alongside the story of Simeon and a song. What did it feel like? That's why the song. <laughs> it's something about you get carried along in the me melody and all of a sudden you're feeling it, hopefully to the point of tears and trembling and gratitude, feeling it. I could just imagine that old Rembrandt <laughs> trying to capture it and feeling it, even as Simeon was feeling it, holding Christ in that moment. The style of old age, the critic writes, is a radical change, not merely a development in the original direction and this sharp 
it, it, it is this sharp stylistic break described as a kind of abstractism in which the expression relies less and less on the vocabulary which finally becomes reduced to a few prime symbols and instead relies more on the syntax. Does everyone like I did, ha would you have to Google what the difference between those two is? I knew what vocabulary was, but I forgot. I failed English right through high school. Vocabulary refers to the literal words. Syntax is the way those words are put together in a sentence to convey a meaning. So the point being, there comes a point where the truth you want to convey cannot be captured with just the right words in a proper sentence form. There comes a point when engaging the mystery, the ineffable, the eternal God. A, a standard sentence and even words can't hold what needs to be expressed. Nor can standard brushstrokes or technique or craft articulate it. There, there is a point where prose needs to move to poetry. And the natural perspective on things needs to move into the abstract to really convey what needs to be conveyed. A point where we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. When you see Christ, you are changed. Like Simeon was, like Rembrandt was seeing what Simeon was seeing. And in that moment, that moment gets translated through your body, to your hand, to the brush, in a way that captures, in a way that maybe you never imagined when you were a younger artist, going through all of the ways of how painting is done and symbols work. But it, it just transcends. And I don't know how, how he knew, you know, a move of the brush, you know, just a, the fine brush with the white to depict the light on Christ's face or on just like that. Simeon, Rembrandt, we are seeing the glory of God come to us in Christ. The light isn't shining in from a window. It's sh shining out of him and onto us. We are literally holding life with a capital L and the giver of all life in Christ coming to humanity. I find it all so encouraging. <laughs> Style of old age. You, you felt it. You're playing your songs and yeah. Old Chuck at this age playing it and it takes on something, right? Old Brett singing this song, but it's different. Sorry to make you all old like me, but I'm feeling it. I can't tell you how many times in the last three months I've said, I feel like things are integrating. And I'm maybe finding my voice for the first time, is that possible? <laughs> but really finding my voice. Thank you, Lord. More myself, the writing, everything, just something is moving. This style of old age. which is what God means for you through suffering, through difficulty, through pain, through watching your wife hurt, through watching relationships destroy or destroy you, being attacked, being sick, mourning, loss. 
in those places, you're made to become more you. Which makes total sense if we're made for another world, right? Which is the Christian trajectory. That your creative capacities have yet another level near the end when you're about to step into a place where who knows what heaven on earth will be like but you will be fully you and your aptitudes and gifts will be hitting on all cylinders or running on all wattages um, and you'll be you that that makes sense that at that transitioning pre-transitioning aged place there would be a way of being that's the last step before that. That is what Rembrandt captures in that painting you're looking at. The essence of the moment, the moreness of you, something mythic. The artist who has reached such a point is beyond art. His abstractism is very near to that of myth in the greatest sense, like Lord of the Rings, myth. Both myth and the style of old age become abbreviations of the world content by presenting its structure and this in its very essence. In their subject matter, these pictures quite literally embrace the totality of the world, God himself with us. For Rembrandt and his contemporaries, no myth had, no, had more power than the Incarnation. The moment of Simeon's recognition of Christ was a moment when man went to the universe. Theologically, I'd say, to the maker of the universe. To see Christ is to see all that fills the cosmos, including you and I, you and me, and everyone here, for who they are, reality for what it is. And in the seeing of reality for what it is, be lifted up even more to sense eternity, to feel the abstraction of the kingdom of God here, but not fully here, but here, right now. To, to know Jesus is to feel fully and one day fully what it feels like when the ultimate promise is kept in relationship to you. So I look at this painting now. I wonder if Simeon wanted the moment to go on forever. And in a way it kind of did, I guess, when he died. But forever with you, with my maker with your maker forever. Stay with me. Save me. I need you and I want you, Lord. Hold me till I die. Hold me till I die. And Simeon seemed to have a bit of it, understanding through his prophecy that Jesus would have to suffer for that holding to ultimately happen and, and give everything and take nothing for that to happen. We know that a little more fully, reading our Bibles, that God laid down his life to save us and our lives from our deaths, literal and otherwise. So knowing all this, it's hard not, hopefully it's hard for you too, not to share Simeon's gratitude as you take in this painting and the story from Luke 2. But thank you for coming, Jesus and for saving me. Thanks for the life you give and are giving and all the relational goodness therein.
even in the struggle, even on the, in the pain, that I can count on two hands the ones I love. <laughs> it's a miracle. Thank you for, for that relational wholeness. And thank you, God, for the hope that lies on the other side of death. Who else do you thank for all of that? Brett's going to come up and we're going to hear the song again. Oh, Brett. I understand that every life must end uh -huh. As we sit alone I know someday we must go uh -huh. Oh, I'm a lucky man To count on both hands The ones I love Some folks just have one, yeah, others they've got none, uh-huh. Stay with me. Let's just breathe. I practiced all my sins never gonna let me win uh-huh under everything just another human being uh-huh yeah i don't want to hurt there's so much here in this world to make me bleed Stay with me, you're all I see, did I say that I need you, did I say that I want you, oh if I didn't I'm a fool, you see. No one knows this more than me As I come clean I wonder every day As I look upon your face Uh-huh Everything you gave Nothing you would take Uh-huh Nothing you would take Every, everything you gave Did I say that I need you? Did I say that I want you? Oh, if I didn't, I'm a fool, you see no one knows this more than me As I come clean Nothing you would take Everything you gave me till I die, meet you on the other side.
It's different, isn't it? <laughs> and it, for me, that starts just months ago, listening to this song as I was thinking about maybe this painting for a day like today, and just said, what would happen if you laid them on top of each other? Let's pray. There are more texts <clears throat> and more words from you layered upon layered on top of each other in our lives than we can imagine, Lord. You are the author, uh, creator, sustainer, keeper, and finisher of all things. And things are more held and connected. They co-illumine one another, speak to each other, whisper and point cajole, nudge in ways that any of us could imagine. One day I know we won't have to imagine. We'll, we'll see it all for what it is. Help that to start in a new way today as we head on our journey to that place. Give us eyes to see you in our city and through our work, through civic leaders and lifeguards and students, through life partners, neighbors, friends, through science, art, sport, through a morning sunrise, the warm sun on our face later today. Help us to know that the light of the world has come to us and is shining upon us, we pray. In your name, light of the world, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, just a couple of announcements, and then we'll close with a blessing. Uh, there was in the email a reminder that if you want to give to the church, you have to give by December 29th for that to count for charitable donations this year. So you were reminded of that. Um, our next service is next week here on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock. So... Uh, I just got a text from someone this morning. Can we bring 15 of our family members? I had to tell them we had a 12 family member limit, so they'd have to choose. And I said, of course. So, but lots of people bring family members, right? And I know lots of you go to be with family members, but usually this gets, it was quite full last year. So, so uh, yeah, you're invited and, uh, and uh, forewarned that it might be busy. And uh, solicited in terms of bringing some baking. Um, it's always a great time to bring your mother's or grandmother's favorite thing that you always make. Um, and not the thing that someone gave you that you'd never eat. Don't bring that one to church. Bring the good one. Um, but it's a great time to, to be a community around food as well. And yeah, we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus. Um, but in particular, it struck me as I said the words in this message, the humility of Christ in a world that's like, right? What does it mean to love that way? And what would that word, what could that word mean to a warring, divisive, polarized, increasingly, more than I've seen it in a long time world? What would that word mean? So, here's your pre-Christmas Eve stinger sermon net. And I think that's it for announcements. So, I'm, uh, oh yeah, maybe one more. My last Sunday preaching here is January 7th. Um, so moving on to another thing. It's all on my website if you want to go see what that thing is. Um, that's all good. Always a mix. I was out there changing the sign the other day, and I don't know if you saw the video reel I posted. I'm going, oh, my heart hurts. I won't have to change the sign anymore. And it was a warm day, so I was enjoying changing the sign. And I'm thinking, oh, 
you mourn so much, right, that you prayed for and dreamt about and wished for happening here, and yet, yeah, won't be here anymore. So, yeah, the mix of excitement for the new and letting go of the old. Now you can stand <clears throat> and receive your God's blessing. Our God's blessing. May the grace of God, our Heavenly Father, and the light and life and truth and beauty and grace and humility of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the abstraction, clarifying, mystery, revealing, uh, eternal, linking power and presence of God's Holy Spirit be with and abide with us all. Amen. Have a good week.